Hello and welcome. I'm David and today I'm taking you with me on my first real life racing event. We're again at the Varna karting track at an event that is hosted by the university. Students from all courses and disciplines are here today. It's a fun event and perfect opportunity, especially after two years of pandemic, to meet people from other courses. I was very excited because it's, as I said, my first race in real life. Also, I didn't know any of the guys, uh, also never raced against them. And I was looking forward to see where I was pace-wise, especially after my analysis, um, see if it had some effect. And I already had my first coming together with someone else. We actually met before, talked before. Um, unfortunately, I thought he would let me go, but he saw me in the last second and we scared each other off. But we apologized right afterwards. And so that was all of it. And we skipped right to the fastest lap of the practice. Going over the bump, not drifting too much, not losing too much, you know, going into the long right-hander slightly slightly using the curb and now going up the hill and now downhill again going full through the left hander into the hairpin braking late just when the tire just when the row of tires ends and now going into the s section using the curb on the first one just slightly on the second one and again a very long right hander down the hill and over the crest into the last left hander it's really interesting to see that the track goes down step wise and it's a very beautiful venue to be honest though it's definitely worth a visit and now as we're going up the hill let's see where the time stops and it's a 1072 which is a good time for my skill level especially with the tires still being cold and having traffic. And since I was the last one, well, let's say in the last group of people who were warming up, I had some time to watch the other people racing. Here we can see the race start of the first race. Um, while the sun was going down, very pretty scenery. And it was actually very close. People were really fighting to get into the top three to make it to the final. And um, actually, I didn't notice while recording this, but now have a look at the first corner. <laughs> the guy in the blue shirt going for a very risky drive, spinning the two fastest guys from the first group. And from then on, it was a rush for them because they were nearly dead end last. And in order to make it to the final, they had to make it into the top three. And as the other groups were racing and the sun was going down, I was getting ready to get into my cart. Unfortunately, as you can see, the sun was already down. And we were about to race in the darkness. But with all the carts on the track uh, and permanently running, they were finally warm. Also, the track was very quick. So perfect conditions for the qualifying. And we will skip right ahead to my fastest lap. Going into the first corner, I had to make an overtake, going in very sharp but still carrying a lot of speed, using the banking on the outside, using the right, the left, and now cutting the curb up the hill, using the curb to stay close. And it was actually quite well compared to my last lap times from the last run here. So into the hairpin, unfortunately locking up and also riding the curb too much, losing some time. But still, the time was okay. Now going through the S's, riding the curb quite hard on this one. And let's see where the time will stop. And as you can see, I will have traffic in the last sector, which will definitely cost me some time. I also go wide, very wide, actually driving the fastest time 
of my uh, race event in that as a sector and now going up the hill even though we had some traffic and now again I have to go wide in order not to break and it's unfortunately just 1074 which was still enough to get on pole but still not very fast and after we all grouped up we were all called into our grid slots and it was sort of a special moment to put the card on P1 and now it was simply about having a good start the first lap yeah giving a cheer to a friend of mine who was also there and now focusing on the lights to get a good start and stay out of trouble in the first lap And as the lights went out, I don't get away well. It seems like I was still on the brake when I pushed the throttle and the car didn't let me go. And I already got the first reminder that I'm too slow getting a first reminder. A nice little tap from behind. And now losing a lot of positions, it's just about finishing and getting into the top three. And now going into the hip and I already gained a position but unfortunately the guy before me locks up the brakes I brake and I get again tapped from behind but still nothing happened not, not a position lost so we continue racing and it's just about getting into the top three I was later on told that I was definitely faster than the other guy so it was just about safely getting into the top three and now getting into the last actual corner I go very wide I was too eager to already make the position which was a very stupid idea looking back and yeah unfortunately the lamps in the last part of the track wasn't working so it was actually as dark as it is on the footage and now getting into the second lap of the race I'll try to be as fast as possible and yeah just like here wait for the others to make a mistake but it was about keeping it clean for me I also think for the others and just making no mistakes and talking of mistakes the next two corners will be absolute chaos P4 absolutely locking up the brakes going wide and then going into the S section look at P2 going absolutely wide coming back P3 nearly driving into him and now he got promoted into P2 and I'm already in the final. This is how quick it can go. It was pure chaos, <laughs> these two first laps. And now going into the last sector, up the hill. P2 goes defensive, up the hill we go side by side. But because he has the tighter line, he's in front now. Just goes in front of me. But now going into P1, he sees me, he goes defensive, very clear move, but I just go wide, wide entry, slow in fast out, and I'm in P2 now. Again going up the hill on the right hander, using the curb, and now it's just about getting to the finish safely. Approaching the leader now. He was actually quite fast in qualifying. I wasn't much faster than him, but it seems like he maybe got a different card or is also just cautiously driving it home. And I could see that I was getting closer and closer to him. And I was already thinking about how and when to set up a move. And he made a mistake in the first corner, now I'm already right on his tail, going up the hill. He loses a lot of time going wide. And now we go together into the hairpin. I think he saw me. He also loses some time on the entry, goes wide. And I simply, very cheekily, put myself in front of him, give him a wave. And yeah, that's 
P1, six positions in four laps. And we already have the first people getting lap. But apart from this, not much more happened in the race. But that didn't mean that I could just turn off my brain and drive home because there were still people to lap and then actually this weird scene happened. I was approaching another driver um, and I had to overlap and I could swear he saw me so I thought because of going wide he let me through but no he didn't and the poor guy I probably scared him or shook him up he nearly forgot to brake, also went wide and yeah looking back not not very nice move from me i thought he let me pass he went wide i mean you couldn't even see him from the angle of my camera but afterwards i also uh, apologized to him um so yeah that was maybe a bit too risky i also rode the curb very hard i could hear the poor cars underneath me scrubbing over the curb but thankfully nothing bad happened and actually nothing more happened so we're just gonna quickly skip to my fastest lap which was also the final lap not braking much also not sliding much taking a very tight line now going through the asses again riding the curb very hard going a bit wide this time on the entry and now going into the hairpin riding over the curb braking very late and carrying more speed going wider and by that i'm early on throttle and that's how i got a new personal best on the hairpin sector as i call it going through the asses staying tight this time taking a very tight line also new personal best and now going through the last actual corner and let's wait and see where the time will stop so the pink time is always the fastest time that i went and the green ones are like the second fastest time so i still have a look at the second and we come home to a new personal best two tenths faster than last time uh, even getting a round of applause from the guy that gave me the fist bump before and so I definitely knew I had improved and that I'm definitely faster now thanks to the analysis coming back to the pit I was very surprised to find out that my fastest lap of the race was also the second fastest lap of the day, which gave me approval and a lot of confidence that doing the analysis actually made me faster. And I was looking forward to go to the final, but now it was time to watch the final qualifying race of the day, where Ryan would take part in. lights go green and ryan gets away well he keeps it clean unlike me and stays with the leaders or let's say the leading group of the race and he would be in contention of the top three so it was going well for him and he was battling very close with p2 um, he was consistently lapping faster than him and getting closer to him and they were having a very tight battle actually but the closer he got the more mistakes he made unfortunately i was standing next to the track and cheering him also as you can hear in the background people cheering because of the on-track action but at some point he got even past p3 which put him into p2 a very good position for the final race but he wouldn't finish in p2 unfortunately both of them were consistently battling close and now unfortunately i missed the move getting out of turn one he had a compromised exit because of a back marker and lost p2 
but it was still enough to get into the final. He would come home in P3. And with the last race, the last qualifying race over, it was time for the final. And while we were waiting for the final to begin, there was some time to talk, to look at the timesheets and to fool around. It was a little bit like a kid's birthday, so we were all in a very good mood and looking forward to race. And it was already time to get ready to race. Unfortunately, I would have a different car that was stationary for a very long time. But this time I would be the first guy getting out of the pit lane, <laughs> let's call it like that. So I would have a free track with no traffic. But before I had talked to the guy in the blue jacket, because he actually went faster than me. And so knowing that he was way faster than me, I simply told him that whenever he comes, I'll just let him by because there was no point in battling each other. So we could help each other getting fast. Halfway through the first timed lap, I realized um, Boris was already approaching me. So I simply said, just let him go. He's faster. I give him a wave. I'll go wide in the last corner and let him by so I don't make him lose time. Even give him a nice bump on the exit because I knew I can only get faster by learning from someone who is actually faster than me. And so we went like that for the rest of the qualifying. I stayed closely behind him and just like here in the first corner I could analyze where I lose time compared to him and where he gains time on me. And playing that, we skipped to my fastest lap of the qualifying. I was still closely behind him, going over the start-finish line, taking a sharper entry, riding the curb a little bit too hard, but still gaining time on him while he chose a wider line. Up the hill, I always gained a bit more time on him due to the narrower line. Now going downhill again into the hairpin, hard over the curb, braking late, going wide. He loses some time, but I gave him a sign already before to just keep going. Now getting into the S section, we both use different lines while I go sharp on the curb and also gain time in this lap. He stays away from them. Now we go into the last corner. I have also a better exit, but thankfully I was not too close, so I didn't have to lift. Now we go up the hill, and let's see where the time will stop this time. And it's a 106.8 which was a little bit slower than my fastest lap, but still it was enough to be with the top guys in front. Yeah, we tried a fist bump, which unfortunately failed. And while we're regrouping, we again had a little conversation. And he wasn't the only one I knew, because looking behind me, it was Ryan. He also made it into the top five, so the first four were quite a bit faster and then Ryan was best of the rest. So it was interesting to see how I would finish and how he would finish also now getting a nice advice from the guy. Also having learned how to make a better start now resting my foot on the tire so I don't use the brake. And now it's time to go again. Getting away well in the first moment, unfortunately. The guys behind were a bit faster. Ryan was literally like a rocket getting past me. 
I lose another position again. Not a good start for me, but going up the hill, I use a tight line side by side with P5. The P5 already goes for a move on Ryan. I look behind me. He was very eager to get the position in a place where you can't really overtake. And I was back at P10 and now even losing another position. With him, the guy behind me really putting on the nice moves, pulling around the outside. Now we go side by side into the last actual corner. So for me, it was just again trying to get back into the top five. And now here, unfortunately, you can't see it. We go side by side, very close. And now he gives me even a little squeeze. I had to lift, but I stick close to him. And let's see where I can set up a move. Going into the first corner, I stay close, but I slide too wide, lose a lot of momentum. But it seems like he's letting me pass here, knowing that we would lose too much time battling, which was a very fair move. So it was P9. Jumping ahead, left three, I was closing in on P8. And I could see that I was definitely faster than him. So it was just a question where will I set up the move here through the asses he picks a very close line on the entry losing a lot of speed and I was getting closer and closer and now we go through the last corner he made a mistake and I was right on his tail going up the hill now Getting into the first corner, he goes very sharp, loses the card on the end, uh, nearly goes into the tire wall, and now I'm up in P8. And right before me, there is a three way fight P7, 6, and 5. And Ryan was minding his own business, being P4, being best of the rest, and was my target to get to him. And the guy's losing a lot of time. I was right on their tail, literally within a few corners and it should be very difficult to overtake them because while you're in the pack, as soon as you open the gap, someone else will go for it. And as they say, normally in karting you don't lose a single position, you normally lose two positions or several positions at the time. So it was important to make a wise move while I was very pumped to get past them, also knowing that I was a bit faster. So it was about being patient and making the right move at the right time. Now, going into T1, Daniel, the guy in the grey pullover, unfortunately bumped the rear of the guy in front of me and lost the card. And this is one free position for me. Now getting into the hairpin, I'll wait, I'll see if there's a gap. He goes very slow and now I'm already next to him and let's see what I can do. But unfortunately in the Esther section there's just one quick line. You can't really hold it round the outside. Maybe I should have in this situation, but I stick behind him for the moment. Now again, going through the last corner, maybe I can get hold on him but he also has to break because the guy in p5 is holding him up as well now we're side by side going up the hill very close and here you can see we even touch for a brief second but he apologized instantly i keep the inside line daniel is actually right behind me and we go sharp again three people into the first corner and P5 is again very slow, so he's also backing me up into the pack. I have to find a way past him. I give him a bump, which was not a nice move at all. I also instantly apologize. 
I was under pressure and I wasn't looking right in front of me and it seemed like he was going to let me by because he really took a very wide entry but unfortunately because of my very very impatient and not smart move I lose the position again and now the problem is Daniel is actually pretty fast so now I'm not just overtaking someone who's slower than me I also have someone to overtake who's faster so while I can see Ryan ahead whenever we come up the hill here you can see him maybe in the distance and I can see him driving off into the sunset while I'm still trying to get a hold on the other guys and now here again I have someone right next to me going sharp into the first corner defending my position while I have to look right in front of me how to get away from them and now Daniel makes himself a gap but unfortunately I was too far away he gets past he's in p5 now while well, I have to get past p6 still now he goes for a very ambitious move cutting the hairpin now we go three wide into the asset section with me being on the outside being in the worst position possible I also didn't try to pick into that little gap because he also seemed a bit annoyed at this point, P6, by getting bumped by me and Daniel at the same time, which is absolutely understandable. But now going around the outside, into the last corner, we go side by side up the hill. And now we'll see who will be ahead on the start-finish straight. With me having a slightly wider line, I picked up a bit more speed and just when I had enough of a gap I pulled right in front of him a very very cheeky move but it paid off because now I got past the whole pack I instantly build a gap and now it's my more or less final chance to get past Daniel and as I'm closing in on him we're also on my fastest lap of the race literally being on his tail after the hairpin but he's still, he's still managing to pull a gap in the right moment so I can't attack him, which makes it very difficult. So I have to be patient, but also find the right moment at the same time. Getting into the first corner, I'm way faster than him. But let's see, he still manages to get a good exit out of T1 because he already pulls away. So I can't attack him, which makes it very difficult. And at this time I also didn't know it was the final lap. Now getting really close, really, really close, being side by side, trying to give him a squeeze to somehow hold it around the outside, but still he manages to put himself right in front of me, which is a very smart move. Because he, unlike me, knew it was the final lap. And it was a very smart way of defending his position. Now, going through the final corner. Now, for the last time, nearly being side by side, going up the hill, I realized, while getting through this section, seeing the checkered flag, that I would come home to P6, which was still a nice outcome. Looking at the flag, it was my first race, also made a few stupid moves due to my inexperience, but thankfully all went well, we all had a good time, I learned a lot, and we all had a great time together. Now, coming back to the pits, I was excited, happy, but also tired at the same time. It was a really nice event, and it was also very cool to shake hands with everyone afterwards. Also giving thumbs up. And yeah, I was very happy for Ryan, because he doesn't get the chance to drive 
very often. He was very happy, also finishing best of the rest, keeping it clean and fast, and also congratulating the top three, the guys on the podium, because they were absolutely out of reach for anyone else. And they battled until the last lap. The lead changed several times, so they made a good show for the spectators. And I hope you enjoyed watching too. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching and stay tuned for the next video.